another episode of Fish in the Bus. I'm your host, John D. And today I'm going to be showing you the correct way to frog fish. Now, frog fishing is one of, is one of those things that really excels in the summertime and can be one of the most uh, used ways to fish when it gets really hot, when temps start reaching 90 degrees, and that water temp starts rising up to high 80s. Now, while the summer may be a really tough time to fish because of the hot weather, frog fishing can eliminate some of those tough days. If you go out on a lake where there's a lot of grass, a lot of pads, even a lot of low-hanging trees or docks, you can use a frog and still catch fish. Not just small ones either. I've seen some toads, absolute toads now, frogs, come all the way out of the water and just snatch them. So today, I'm going to go in the water, I'm going to go to a local public lake around here, and I'm going to show you guys how to effectively fish a frog and how many different ways there are you can use this little guy right here. Um, along with that I'm going to show you a few different brands and a few different styles of frogs and um, just how to approach some of these lethargic summer bass and get them to commit to a bait that's right on the surface. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. Out here at the first pond right here, this is a public waterway, there's a couple waterways over here uh, in West Dundee, Illinois. <coughs> Excuse me. And all these bodies of waters are naturally occurring. So this prairie used to be um, a glacier tens of thousands of years ago. I don't think this water is from the glacier, but basically these small ponds hold fish, bluegill, largemouth bass. I think maybe one of them holds pike something like that but I found out about these a couple a couple uh, months ago and they're actually really good fishing there's some pads or some grass this one I'm fishing right now is really shallow but I'm just fishing just to get started and today like I told you I'm gonna be showing you how to use the frog and the frog that I've chose right today today is the uh, vag vagabond Z bush and I've had this frog for quite some time now and I found it in my bag and I wanted to try it out and it's one of the perfect Japanese high performing frogs for the price point. It's like twelve dollars and this thing will do everything you want that a slither K can do or you know coppers. If anything, if you're gonna spend ten, eleven dollars on a copper, just go ahead and get yourself a Z bush. I have no affili affiliation with the company at all. I'm just saying these baits are they're just awesome. So like I said today I'm gonna show you how to use these frogs. We've got a great day for open water frog and it's overcast. Temps have dropped just a little bit and the wind's starting to pick up, pick up. I hope that wind kind of backs off, stays just about as is now, or a little bit less, uh, or you know, because it looks like we're gonna have a really good day. So uh, thanks for watching. And stay tuned. You know, the cool thing about the frog is you can apply it to pretty much any type of application in the lake. You know, if you're fishing low hanging trees or branches on a riprap shoreline, you can throw a frog fits in the summertime as long as the water temp is warm. Uh, if you've got pads you can throw a frog. If you've got open water grass you can throw a frog. If you've got slop you can throw a frog. It's just one of those very useful tools in the bass fishing industry. And like I'm showing you here, here today, we've got some pads. But out there past what most anglers can see is a lot of open water grass. And what that is is it's just grass that's about a foot underneath the surface of the water or a little bit less than that and it almost kind of creates as an underwater mat and this is when these guys really excel so I have two choices here I can fish open water grass or I can fish these pads and sometimes you know the pads are closer to towards the shoreline you get a few more maybe bigger ones or ones that are lurking in that shallower a little bit warmer water or you can go out deeper where you've got this 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 thick grass that's right beneath the surface and a lot of people are like why don't you just throw a spook or a topwater about the simplest answer you can give to that is if you hook a three four pounder and you've got a spook with two trebles sometimes if you're throwing a like a vixen or like a you know a huge spook with three trebles you hook that fish you're gonna hook it but it's gonna go right into that grass and good luck getting that thing out when you've got all those treble hooks hooked up to the bass the grass and whatever else is down there with the frog you've got two weedless hooks and most of the time that fish is gonna be hooked on both those so the only thing you have to worry about is reeling that fish in. And people think the frog has a terrible hookup ratio, about the exact opposite. This guy's hookup, you know, if you know what you're doing, if you know how to set the hook, which I'm going to teach you here later, uh, if you know how to set the hook and, and properly swing those fish in the boat, 
and you have a great chance of uh, catching a toad. So I'm gonna go fish these pads right now. Walking over to this other spot right here, that little shallow stone pond didn't have a whole lot of action in it. Could spend more time with it, but I'd rather just stick to this bigger one where I know there's really nice fish in it to fish the frog. But I want to take a moment to talk about the equipment that uh, you need to use if you're frog fishing. You know, there's a couple options. The first one is you can go heavy. You can fish a 7.6, medium heavy to heavy action rod with a fast tip or an extra fast tip. I like the fast tip if I'm if I'm trying to walk a frog so I have a little bit more give. And also for the fact that if I get a blow up, I want a little bit give so I can feel the fish pull before I set the hook. And that's one of the most important things too, is if you get a blow up, don't set the hook immediately. Wait, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Or you can wait until you actually feel the fish pull that frog and then you set the hook. Because sometimes they'll miss it and when you set the hook, you take that frog right out of the strike zone. But if you let it sit there and you know the fish isn't on, then you can keep working and it'll come back. Or another one that's hanging with it will come back and eat it too. So like I said, 7.6 rod, you can get a 7.2 heavy as well, so it's a little bit more stouter, shorter. I like to use 65 pound braid at most, even 80, it's a little too high, but I know guys who use it. And I like using a, a big reel like a Corrado 200 size, something that fits a lot of line because I like whipping my frogs way out there. You know, small diameter line like a 65 pound test with a big reel that's got at the very least a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio, something fast, something that allows me to crank up that line and set the hook, is perfect. So big reel, big rod, strong line, and a frog that'll catch fish. That's my top recommendation for you guys. And I assume that's what most anglers who frog fish would suggest as well. So right here is my setup. I know I don't have a whole lot of line on there, but I would suggest spooling that baby up until you can't see the spool anymore. Because man, I love a lot of line. I love being able to whip that thing out there, get it right in the strike zone and reel that fish in. There's never too far of a cast when you're frog fishing. Because you're fishing with heavy, heavy line, heavy rod, you're gonna get that fish in, no doubt, as long as you stay persistent and keep pressure on that fish. The other thing I forgot to mention, along with a frogging rod, I like to also keep a flipping rod with me when I'm frog fishing. And it may seem kind of weird, but the ideology behind that is if I'm fishing a frog and I get a blow up and completely miss it, and I throw it back in there, and I know there's no chance of me getting that fish on the frog. If I'm fishing a mat, let's say, or some pads, I'll use a flipping rod and get down there. And it's almost like my backup plan, you know? I've got like a half ounce to a full ounce weight on there. I see that blow up, I know it's a toad. I'll just flip in there in that little hole where that blow up came from and I'll work that crawl or, or creature bait or wherever I'm flipping until I can get that fish out. And you know, sometimes it's inevitable, they won't come back, they're spooked, they know it's a, you know, it's a, they know it's a lure and they know it's, you know, you're, no, you're up to no good, but give it a shot. And you may be surprised your success rate with using the one-two punch might actually get them. So that's something to keep in mind is have both these rods in your boat if you're fishing grass or uh, if you're frog fishing, just bring the flipping rod with you just for just for fishermen's sake. Let's see if we can't get a fish here. Now, I talked to you guys about how to work a frog. There's lots of different ways you can work a frog. My favorite is just walking it. Straight walking it. And all that is is I take my rod it's just constant motion like this, back and forth. And it's usually really erratic, it's pretty fast like this. And I, whenever I jerk it, I don't just jerk it and leave it there. A lot of people are like, do this, and they don't know why it's not walking. You gotta walk it and pop it back. You gotta give that line slack so that bait can go side to side. Otherwise, you're just gonna be kind of pulling, and you're not gonna catch fish that way. So kind of give it that twitch, make sure the butt of the end of the rod is touching your forearm or going behind it at least. And that frog, if you've, you've got a good one, like this Vagabond Bush Z or a Coppers or a Spro Bronze Eye, it'll walk like this. It'll go back and forth. And it's really erratic action. It drives the fish nuts, you know. It, it just flat out works. I don't know what the ideology behind it is, but fish love it. The other cool thing I like to do is if I'm fishing heavy grass and I can't walk it, 
I'll just real quick pop it, pop and reel, and it just kind of bobs up and down and just creates a bunch of wake and a bunch of water movement, just pushes that water away and drives those fish nuts as well. And it's a it's a perfect way to use the frog if you can't walk it. If you're in heavy grass or if you're fishing pads, it just kind of pushes pushes that that scum away or it pushes those pads away. It's a great heavy cover way to work the frog. But um, enough talking. I'm going to get into some of these fish here. I know they're around here, so uh, stay tuned. Let's see if I can whack it. First fish of the day. I just popped one off a little bit bigger than that. But that guy with feline did it. I'm not sure if I got it all on video, but uh, it was a pretty cool pull off. Feline right at it, blew it up right before it. Yeah, that scum. Feline. Using a fervent frog right there. Nice fish though, not bad. Really cool to catch these fish in the summer times. Exact opposite as it was to yesterday. It's really hot today. And uh, the fish are under this grass. Close to 90 days, so these fish are staying up under this grass and we're gonna find that fish. Beautiful. 